Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew nation. This is Officer Iba, and my reading for today is Officer Madalak. And first, I'm going to pray all praises and glory to Ahadiah, Bahashim, Yeshaya, Wabu Wah, for giving me this opportunity to speak to his people. Today's lesson is, is Christianity the gospel of Yeshua Christ according to the scripture? We're going to go into Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. I'm going to lay the, um, my foundation scripture for this evening. Once again, that's Galatians chapter 1. Verses 6 through 9. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8. But so we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Amen. So this evening, we're going to go into the scriptures. We're going to go precept by precept, and we're going to dissect the word of the Most High this evening. Verse 6, coming from Galatians chapter 1. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So this is Paul speaking to the Galatians. And Paul is, is saying to the Galatians, why are you preaching another gospel? Verse 7, which is not another, because there's only one gospel. And I'm going to cover that this evening. But, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. So pervert means change or deviate. So you had people back then during Paul times that was deviating from the gospel. Verse 8, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. So Paul is saying to the Galatians, whether it be, whether it be an angel or any other person that preaches another gospel according to the scriptures, let him be accursed. Okay? Accursed means doomed. Okay? Verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. So what I'm going to cover this evening is the gospel that Yeshua preached and the disciples preached. For the record, I'm not, going to, I'm not bashing Christian, Christian people around the world. But I'm praying that this will wake you up, exposing the half-truths that are taught by the Roman Catholic Church or the Christian Western Church in America. So this evening, the purpose of gospel, Yeshua, is to bring the chosen people first back to the Father. So this is the original plan, is to bring the chosen people of Israel back to the Father. So allow me to lay the foundation this evening so we can have a, have a clear understanding of the Most High, the most high original purpose. Uh, can you give me Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6? That's Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. The book of Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6. Now, therefore, 
if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and in holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Amen. So you have it in Exodus. The Most High is giving us the, the covenant, okay? He shared the covenant with us and giving it to us. Verse 5, now therefore, if ye obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Let me emphasize that. We are, Israel is a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation means, holy means set apart. A holy nation. So we're set apart for the most high use. Okay, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. That's Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 and 9. 6 through 9. Deuteronomy, Salakia. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the most high thy power. The Most High thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. Verse 8. But because the Most High loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9. Know therefore that the Most High thy power, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. So. Verse 6 in Deuteronomy, chapter 7. For thou art an holy people, set apart holy people, unto the Most High. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So I'm laying the foundation. Here's the scripture right here. So these, the scripture that I'm bringing forth, I'm laying the pattern. This is the original purpose. This is the original plan of the Most High. And as you can see in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 through 9. Okay, go with me to the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. That's the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Most High hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, verse 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Okay. So in the book of Amos, the Most High speaking to Israel, verse 1, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, verse 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So I'm going to focus in on verse 2. The Most High, in his word, verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Most High does not deal with any other nation on the face of this earth but Israel. The original purpose was the laws, statutes, and the commandments goes to Israel. And we are to preach 
to the nations according to his word. Okay, I give me Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. Isaiah 8, 8, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Amen. So I'm laying the foundation, I'm laying the precepts, the original purpose, the original plan of the Most High to Israel. It's verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Meaning a scripture must back up a scripture. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. All right? So we have to go according to the scriptures when we're bringing the gospel of Josiah. We have to go scripture by scripture. Each scripture has to line up and back each other up. You just can't go by, pick a scripture out, which the Christian church does. They pick one scripture and hold on to that. You, that's not what the Most High said. That's deviating to another gospel. For example, they use John 3.16. Okay, there's precepts for John 3.16. The Most High was not speaking to the whole world. He was speaking to his people, Israel. So the scripture says precept by precept you must follow. Okay, give me the book of Isaiah. We're saying in Isaiah, are we going to chapter 49? So what I'm, what I'm about to cover right now is the, the Most High original plan. The Most High does not deviate from his word. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 5 through 6. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 5. And now saith the Most High that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. So Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Most High, and my power shall be my strength. Verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Amen. So right here in the book of Isaiah, the Most High said to Isaiah, verse 5, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. There you have it. Once again, to bring Jacob again to him. That's the original purpose, the original plan. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Verse 6, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise of the tribes of Jacob. I'm going to read that again. It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the, the tribes of Jacob. This is the original plan. And you're going to see this, I'm going to cover this also in the New Testament. Because you're going to have the Christian church say, oh, we stand the, the New Testament. We don't go to the Old Testament. The most high words from Genesis to Revelation. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So it's covering Genesis all to Revelation. And to restore the pre- preserve of Israel. That's the original plan, to restore us. Why? Because we deviated from the Most High. We broke the law, statutes, and the commandments. I will also give thee a light for the Gentiles. So this is the original plan. Israel is gets the law, statutes, and the commandments, and we are to preach to the nations which are the Gentiles, that they may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Therefore, in the Old Testament, the Most High is telling his prophet Isaiah to bring the chosen people to Israel back again to himself. 
Okay, give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 through 8. And also, let me add this also to the to the Christians. They love to, to read Isaiah as far as in chapter 53, um, prop, prop, that Isaiah prophesied through Isaiah, the most High prophesied through Isaiah to let the world know that the Messiah was, is coming in Isaiah, chapter 53. But they never talk about Isaiah 49, 5 through 6. So we need to bring that out. Precept upon precept. Okay, that's Matthew chapter 10, verse through 8. St. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 2. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Verse 3. Philip, and Bartholomew. Thomas, and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus. Verse 4, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. All right. So right here I've just laid the, the introduction of the disciples. That the 12 disciples, and I'm going to cover that in the future later on through the lesson, that all the disciples were from the 12 tribes of Israel. So we must understand the law, statutes, and the commandments is given to Israel. And and I just wanted to lay the foundation, the introduction of the disciples. Okay? Also, um, give me verse 5. Verse 5. These twelve Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Verse 6 but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Amen. So according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, these twelve Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, and to ye not. Verse 6, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So if you have any other gospel that is not preaching to Israel, it's not the gospel according to the word. All right, so we have to understand that. We cannot deviate. So you have all these Gentile churches or these um, other nations that are using Yeshua's name to preach the gospel, but, but if they're not waking up Israel and sharing and telling Israel that they are the kingdom of priests, according to, as we read in Deuteronomy and Exodus, they're preaching another gospel. Okay, I, give me uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. So I'm, I'm adding another precept to that so we, we can have a clear understanding of the Mosai's original purpose, original plan, spoken of in Galatians. Okay, that's Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right. So in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, and the child speaks, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the disciples in Yeshua, they read the prophets. They understood, as we just read in Isaiah, Chapter 49, 
that the most I spoke to, to Isaiah said is to bring Jacob again to him. And as you can see in the New Testament, the most I, it's, it's, it's the same thing, the same precept. The mission did not deviate. It did not change. All right? Now, you're going to have a lot of Christians that's going to say, oh, how can I fair? How can the most I choose someone else and doesn't love us? No. That's not, that's not true. That's not so. Okay? Because we also read in the book of Isaiah that Israel will be a light. In verse 6, Israel will be a light to the Gentiles. Okay, that's why you have to go so you will bring that Christian to the to the to the scriptures in Isaiah. Okay, so Israel is a light to the Gentiles and to the other nations. So um, salvation is not left out to the Gentiles. It's for them as well. But through Israel. Okay. Give me and I'm gonna cover that as well in Isaiah chapter fifty six, verse six through eight. That's the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 6 through 8. Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 6. Also, the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Most High to serve him and to love the name of the Most High, to be his servant, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Verse 7, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Verse 8, the most high power which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. Amen. So the Most High has not forgotten about Gentiles. Never had, never will. That's according to the plan as we covered in Isaiah earlier. Okay? In Isaiah 56, there's another precept. Isaiah 56, verse 6. Also the sons of the stranger, that's the Gentile, that's the other nations that's outside of Israel, that joined themselves to the Most High to serve him and to love the name of the Most High, to be his servants. Every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. So the Most High is letting the other nation know, if you keep my laws, statutes, and the commandments, and receive your Shia, you are welcome. You will have eternal life. Okay? Verse 7, even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. I'm going to read that again. Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Not for some people, for all people. That's all the nations that receive your Shia and keep his laws, statutes, and his commandments. Once again, the Most High has not changed his mission or purpose on bringing Israel back to himself. All the disciples and their descendants were and still are Hebrew Israelites. So this gospel that you have preaching now in the earth, that you have Christianity, they're preaching the gospel supposedly of the Messiah, it's not backing up with the scriptures. We just covered the scriptures by precept. And as you can see, this gospel that they're preaching in the earth today deviates from the scriptures. It's not the gospel of Josiah Christ that was preached when the disciples was here on earth with Josiah. So we're going to cover, we're going to go into where did the Christian come from, the name, the word Christian. Why am I exposing these abominable houses? Because that's what they're called. Elder called them the abominable houses, and it's true. Because the majority of Israel 
is being deceived and hold captive in them. So you have to understand, this Christianity or this um, doctrine that's being preached in the earth is, a, is nothing but a snare. It's a trap. It's a web to deceive Israel, to deceive our people from coming to the truth. All right, and we're going to go into the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 21. When you get time, you can read the whole chapter, but I'm just going to cover, give you a quick glimpse of, of where the, the word originates from, Christian. So when you get time, you can read Acts chapter 11 from the beginning, but we're just going to jump into it in verse 21. So that's the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 21. The book of Acts chapter 11, verse 21. And the hand of the Most High was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Most High. Verse 22. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Verse 23. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of the Most High, was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Most High. Verse 24, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and much people was added unto the Most High. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Verse 26, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, verse 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, verse 30, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Amen. So this is, your, this is where the word Christian deviated from, came from. The other nations called the disciples Christians. The world called us Christians. So this is a man-made doctrine. This is a man-made religion, Christianity. This is not the gospel of Yeshua. Okay? So right here, your disciples were called Christians in the book of Acts, chapter 11. All right? And then I'm going to cover another. It was mentioned two other times. We're going to cover those scriptures as well. Say in the book of Acts, we're going to go to Acts chapter 26, verse 28. So the other nations are calling the disciples, which are Hebrew Israelite Christians. So that's the book of Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Amen. So there you see it right there. Another time it was mentioned. Also, I give me um, 29 as well is mentioned again in the same chapter. Acts, Acts chapter 26, verse 29. Verse 29. And Paul said, I would to the Most High that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. All right. And then it's also mentioned in First Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. That's First Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. 
Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the Most High on this behalf. So right there you have when Christian was mentioned, the disciples were called Christians. So we know this is a man-made religion, the word Christianity, Christian. So this is another gospel, and it's not according to Scripture. So now you have the origin of your Christian faith or your Christianity. The disciples were first called Christians by the Gentiles in Antioch. All the disciples were and still are of Hebrew descent. We are the ancestors. I mean, we are the, the, the generations of the Hebrew Israelites. So Christianity today is not the gospel of Josiah Christ that the 12 disciples preach. So if you are preaching, Shalaki, so if you are not preaching to the most High's chosen people, Israel, to let them know they are his chosen people, you are not preaching the gospel of Josiah Christ. As I laid previously in the scriptures, the gospel goes to the disciples, and they are preaching. They are to preach the law, statutes, and the commandments to the nations of the world, of the earth. So the Most High is a God of order. And I'm going to, I'm going to bring that scripture out in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For Ahia is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Amen. So the most is not the author of confusion. All these different um, religions in the earth today, all these different doctrines of Christianity, the most is not the author of confusion. There's only one gospel, according to Galatians. And that's, as, as Galatians says, as Paul was telling the Galatians, that this gospel, any other gospel that you receive, that's not according to what we speak, the side of folk and the, and the disciple is accursed. So the most is not the author of confusion. Okay. So if you're not awakening the house of Israel, the most has chosen people, Israel, to come back to our royal priesthood so we may preach this gospel to the nations. That's the whole duty of Israel. The Most High gave us the law, statutes, and his commandments to preach to the other nations according to Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. I'm going to read that. I'm going to bring that up. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. St. Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. And Yeshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, and in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. All right, there you have it right there. This is, Messiah is speaking to the disciples. This is our mission. This is the gospel. Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's the whole duty of Israel, to bring the law, statutes, and the commandments to the other nations, and teaching that Yeshua is the way to eternal life. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the whole purpose. That's the mission. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. I have, com I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So why does it matter to be royal bloodline of Jacob. Okay. Okay. Why does it matter that you're royal bloodline of Jacob? 
Paul asked the same question. And we're going to come to the scriptures. Why does it matter to know we are the people God's chosen? Give me the, the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. That's the book, of, the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Verse 2. Go ahead, I, Much go ahead. every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Amen. So Paul was asking the same question. Paul was asking what advantage in verse in Romans chapter two, verse one, what advantage hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? And Paul explains in Romans chapter two, verse two, much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of the most high. What are the oracles? The laws the statutes and the commandments of the Most High. That's the oracles, as we covered in the book of Exodus and the book of Deuteronomy. The Most High gave us the oracles, gave Israel the oracles. That's, a, that's what makes us special. Okay, give me the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 1. That's the book of Romans. Chapter 11, verse 1. Romans, chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath the higher cast away his people, most high forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Amen. So we have to understand this in the book of Romans, chapter 11. Paul, verse 1, Paul is, is explaining has the Most High cast Israel away, his people? God forbid. No, he did not cast us away. You're going to hear a lot of Christians say, as you minister to them, the Most High's word, oh, Israel's done away with. No, you take them to this chapter right here. You take them to Romans chapter 11, verse 1. It says, I say then, hath God away his, away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul asked himself, what advantage is that we are Jews? And I covered that because we had the oracles. The oracles was given to Israel. And I'm going to also break that down with another precept. I'll go ahead and give you Psalms chapter 147, verse 19 through 20. Okay, that's the book of Psalms, chapter 147. Verses 19 through 20. Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. Amen. So the Jews were given the, given the commandments. The whole Bible is about the Jews. The whole Bible is about us. From Genesis to Revelation. We are God's chosen who get the promise through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel. And only, the, and only us Hebrews can bring the understanding of this book, of his holy word, and be a light to the world. So according to the scriptures, verse 19, he showed his word unto Jacob. We are the seed of Jacob. We are the church tribes of Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20, he has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the most high. So only Israel can bring the understanding to the other nations, to the world, according to the scriptures. Now, if you have a Gentile or another nation, that they can bring the understanding as well, but they have to go through Israel first. 
to learn of the Most High's word, to learn of the oracles of the Most High. They have to go through Israelite to get the understanding. And that's according to the scripture, as we just read right here. Okay, y'all, give me Matthew chapter 5. That's verse 13 through 16. And I'm going to show you that us, Israel, we are the light to the earth. That's the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 13 through 16. St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. So, as a Christian, when I was a Christian, and I was I was in the faith at the time. I mean, that religion. I was in the religion at that time. And when I read Matthew chapter five, they used to teach me that this was speaking to the Christians. That you are verse thirteen. You are the salt of the earth. I used to think, oh, I'm in this equation. But if you go up a few a few scriptures, the Messiah is speaking to the disciples. He wasn't speaking to the other nations. He was speaking to his disciples. He went up to a mountain and he took the disciples and he sent them down and he spoke to them and said in verse 10, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost his savior, wherewith shall it be salted? So he was letting them know that you are special. You are a light unto the world. Only, the, only you can give the understanding of the Most High's word and, and his laws, statutes, and the commandments. But to show you how this Christianity, this religion, they would twist the word of the Most High. And now you're thinking they're preaching, they, they are preaching another gospel, and it's not, it's not according to Scripture. So now since the Jews are living at the bottom of the earth, because we have been stripped of all our biblical knowledge. So uh, give me Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. And I'm going to cover where Israel fell. Why did we fall? Because you are, well, actually, we already know where we, we fell, according to Deuteronomy. But our, our, we were stripped from our knowledge of the word, our biblical knowledge, our priesthood. Well, not the priesthood, but we were stripped from our riches. And I'm going to cover that in Hosea. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Most High, ye children of Israel. For the Most High hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the Most High in the land. Verse 2. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Verse 4. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Verse 5. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. 
So here you, you see the Most High is stripping Israel, okay, of our knowledge of the Most High, our biblical knowledge. So in verse 6 it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Remember I covered that earlier. We are a kingdom of priests. But since we disobey the Most High law, statutes, and commandments, the Most High is, is, is speaking to his people saying, you will be no more priest to me because you have broken the law. You have not obeyed the law. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. All right? So, and this scripture comes alive. As you can see, Israel, I mean, Jacob's trouble. You have young, our young Judites, Issacharites. Um, we're getting shot in the street. Why? Because the most side, you forget, according to um, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, you reject my knowledge, I will reject your children. I will forget your children. And that's why you have all these deaths happening to the, the seed of Jacob. Because that scene or that person did not give their life to Yeshua yet, and, it's, and they are not keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments. And so their seed is perishing in the streets. Israel is dying in the streets if they're not keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments, according to the scripture. Okay, I give me Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. I'm going to show our knowledge, our we were discontinued from our heritage, our language, our culture, because we disobeyed the law, statutes, and the commandments. And we were discontinued from it. So that's in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. All right. So there you, you have the Judites. We came over here and we served another, we served our enemies. All the 12 tribes, if you do your research and follow the scriptures, you see each of the 12 tribes of Israel Following the scripture, the scripture came to pass. We are all discontinued. Even if we speak Spanish, we are discontinued. That's not our original language. Okay, Hebrew is our original language. And the scripture says, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. All right? And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. All right, so all the 12 tribes, we're, in, we're, not in, we're not in our land. We're in our enemy's land, each tribe, and we are discontinued from our heritage. Okay, I give you Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. And that's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. All right. So stay, stay with me. Um, my Hebrew nation, the lesson is, is Christianity, the gospel of Josiah of Christ, according to Scripture. All right, so I'm laying precept that you can see the original plan of the Most High all the way up to now. All right, and here you see the Most High stripping us of our knowledge, our biblical knowledge, and why we're not preaching the Most High's will now as Israel altogether. But he's bringing us back, okay? He's bringing us back according to Scripture so we can go full force as kingdom of priests into all the earth. But I have, first I have to show you why we got stripped and what happened. So that's why I'm covering these, these precepts, these scriptures. All right. So I'll go ahead and give me Romans 
chapter 11, verse 11. That's Romans, chapter 11, verse 11. Romans, chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Most high forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. All right. So in the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 11, I say, Paul says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? So as you know, according to Scripture, Israel fell, okay? But the other nations is like, as you can see, they took half troops and ran with it and distorting the word of the Most High. And they're not preaching according to Galatians. They're preaching another gospel. And so they're saying, the Gentiles are saying to themselves, did Israel fall? You know, Israel fell, and we can, we can preach what we want. There is no more Israelites. It's a new spiritual Israelite now that you'll hear the Christian church saying. But Paul is saying back then and now, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Talking about Israel, God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, that, that fall of salvation is talking about the riches of Israel before the fall, okay? Because according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, the most, well, actually, I'll go ahead and give me that, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All right. So right there, that's, this is what happened, that fall of salvation in verse 28. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All right? So if Israel would have kept the law, statutes, and commandments, as the Most High instructed us to do, we never would have failed. We would have stayed on top. We would have kept our riches, the, the, the Solomon riches, the temple. We would have kept all the riches. But since we failed, the fall of salvation now is given to the Gentiles. All the other nations have our wealth. These banks, these um, other nations, that's Israel. That's our wealth. And because of our fall, they had that now. I'm going to cover that in another scripture as well. Give me the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20 through 24. That's the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20 through 24. So this is where Israel fell in 70 A.D., St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with army, then know that the desolation thereof is not, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Verse 22, for these be thy salakia, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Verse 23, but woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. It shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right. So that's covering the fall of salvation according to Romans chapter 11, verse 11. So Israel fell, and now the fall, 
he fell, and this is what happens. Our riches was given to the Gentiles, our wealth. And this is to provoke us to jealousy, to come back to the Most High. All right. So this is the strip that took place for Israel. We were stripped of our biblical knowledge, okay, and, and, and also our wealth we were stripped. So is Christianity preaching the word completely contrary to what the Bible says for doctrines such as the rapture, the trinity, idol worship, and pagan practices along with philosophy? So according to the scriptures, Christianity is not the gospel of Josiah because they're preaching the rapture with half-truths. They're preaching the trinity, saying there's... Um, three persons, and they're preaching idol worship. And the Most High said not to, to worship any idols. And they do a pagan practices as well, which are what now? Your Halloween, your Sunday worship, your Christmas, your Easter, your Thanksgiving, all these are pagan practices. So we're going to cover how the paganism started in the Christian church. Where did the interjection come in with pagan practices? And that came in during the 4th century and the early 5th century in Rome. And that's the interjections. And you had the Sunday worship, the Christmas, the Easter, the Halloween, all these are pagan practices. We are only to do holy days in Leviticus chapter 23. Those are our only holy convocation. And that's all Israel is to do, nothing else. We are not to do any other nations, our father, the, the other nation gods, by doing their pagan practices. All right? Now, I'm going to cover in the book of Acts where Christianity are the, um, was injected with Easter. They put this in our Bible, in our, in our word. They injected it. So go to, let's go to um, the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. That's the book of Acts, chapter chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. All right. So in verse 4, you have your interjection of Easter because you're going to have a lot of Christians that are going to take it and say, oh, Easter's in the Bible. Now, if you do your research and your study, you'll find out that that word Easter is Passover. It was injected into the Bible. All right. And I'm going to, if you go up further, actually a verse up, in the book of Acts, it was talking about, and I'm going to read the verse 3, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. There were the days of unleavened bread. So it was a Passover that was taking place, and we were celebrating the holy convocation of the unleavened bread. All right? And we're going to go there in the book of Exodus. Chapter 12, verse 15. That's the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 15. Exodus, chapter 12, verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that soul shall be cut off from Israel. All right. So I brought this scripture out to let you know that the word Easter is, the pa is Passover in Acts according to Exodus. All right. So that Easter which is talking about the Passover, which was the unleavened bread in the book of Acts, Exodus, chapter 12, verse 15. All right. So you give you clarity and understanding that they're interjecting into our word. They're, they're foolishness. The deceit. All right, so we know Easter is not part of the gospel of Yeshua Christ. So we know that. 
We are not to celebrate Easter. Period. All right. We're going to cover Christmas. Now, I'm not going to cover all these pagan holidays. I'm just going to cover Christmas, and that would be the last of it. So actually give me Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. That's the book of Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Most High, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Amen. So you have it right here. That this is where these heathens or the other nations get the Christmas from. All right? And you have, the, it's a pagan Holiday. This is Nimrod's birthday, December 25th, and you have the Christians celebrating this, and it gives you an account of it in Jeremiah chapter 10 about the Christmas tree. So if you read right here in Jeremiah, it says, they deck it with silver and with gold. So you have your, your Christmas ornaments. Your, your little wrap that you, it'd be silver or it could be gold, they wrap it around the Christmas tree. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. And then it goes down and says, they are upright as the palm tree. All right, so that's a Christmas tree. So all these are pagan holidays. These are pagan worships that, worships that Christianity is teaching. So you have to ask yourself, is this the gospel of Josiah? according to Galatians. All right? So, in Matthew chapter 24, I'll give you Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Matthew, that's Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel, what does it talk about? This gospel is talking about in the book of Galatians that this gospel, that Paul preached, the disciples preached, the Messiah preached, that gospel, this gospel that we're preaching right now, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, according to, I did, I did the research, you have 2.1 billion Christians around the world. All right? And Yeshua has not come yet. Why? Scripture says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness. Then shall the end come. We have TV and satellites all around the world. All these Christian churches on every street corner in America. Who does it? Who does it know about Christianity? And the end is not here yet. Now, of course, in Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen says, "And this gospel." So apparently, Christianity is not the gospel of Yeshua, according to Scripture. So this leads me with one conclusion, because the Most High Word says his word will not come back to him void. So this gospel must be preached unto all the world, and to all the nations. Then the end shall come. Okay, I. 
Give me Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So when the Most High says it, it comes to pass and it will happen. So it's letting you know that his gospel has not been preached to all the nations yet, even with the 2.1 billion Christians. That lets you know that that's not the word of the Most High. So give me Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Amen. So that's the word. The Most High's word comes to pass. This modern-day Christianity in the earth today is not the gospel of the sight of Christ and what the twelve disciples taught. It's not. And go ahead, I'll give me Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Amen. So, verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So that's your modern-day Christianity and all this doctrines. My brothers and sisters, this is not some distant future prophecy. This is now. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You get, you get time, I want you to pull up all the Christian doctrines. It's like over a hundred plus. You got your Baptists, your Pentecostal, your Holy Rollers, your Methodists, and the list goes on and on and on. The site was talking about the Christian church. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. So they're using the name of Christ to deceive you and bring you in because they're not following none of the scriptures of Messiah according to Galatians. None of it is deviated, is being perverted. So it is now our job in these last days to humble ourselves and come back to Christ and the Father and preach the truth, and be leaders in these last days, all right? So we're going to go to Revelation, and we're going to see the prophecy of what Israel is to do in the last days, and why the Christian churches are not building us up, why they're not teaching Israel that you're going to be used in the last days in the book of Revelation. Go ahead, I'll give me Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. Because you, you hear these Christian churches saying, yeah, we're waiting on you, um, this time you to come back, and we're, we want to be ratcheted up. Well, how are you going to get ratcheted up if you don't fulfill the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8? This must come to pass first. The 12, how are the 12, how are the 12 tribes of Israel going to know who they are if it's not being preached in the church? Because most, the majority of Israel are in these abominable houses. They're a snare to Israel. They're being held captive. They're being brainwashed. They don't know that they're Jacob, the seed of Jacob. Okay, I give me Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 through 8. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Verse 3, saying, 
hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Verse 6. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand. Verse 7. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed twelve thousand. Verse eight. Of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed twelve thousand. Amen. Amen. So in the last days there will be twelve thousand leaders, men, who will be marked as the leaders in the last days who will bring forth this truth, who would have a testimony of who they are. So we have to understand, how can these people, us, how can Israel know who they are if they aren't being told they are the real Jews? So in these abominable houses, they're not teaching Israel that they're the chosen. They're not teaching them. But according to Scripture, Isaiah, the Most High told Isaiah to bring Israel back, to wake up the tribes of Israel. That's the, that's the mission. The Most High did not deviate. So if these Christian churches, these abominable houses are not teaching Israel that they are the virgin priesthood, that, that they are called by the Most High, it's another gospel, and it's not according to the Most High's word. So all these men will see the wickedness. It's talking about us, us Israel. The, um, the 12 tribes that, that will be selected. All these men will see the wickedness of this world and see Christ nowhere in this world. That, Like I said earlier, the Christian churches are deceiving people, and also you have the Jewish people are the synagogues that's in Israel right now. They are the synagogues of Satan and are running everything we see today along with Satan. So to all the other nations, to all the Edomites, to all the Gentile Christian churches around the world, if you're not preaching to Israel to wake them up according to his holy word, you're preaching another gospel. And that's according to Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. Christianity is not the gospel of Yeshua according to scripture. So my brothers and sisters, this is our duty as disciples of Josiah Christ. Order must take place. The Jew first, then the Gentile, according to the Most High's word. And I, and I give all praises to Ahadiah by Hashem Josiah. And I thank the Most High for his word, and I pray that you have understanding. And bless his holy name. I yield.